Make sure you reattempt the question first before listening on. In this question, we're trying to find the net amount of charge that is contained in a cube 100 meters on edge. We went ahead and drew a cube, and then we centered it on a coordinate system. The question notes that the electric field is directed vertically down, so we've drawn an electric field pointing straight down. Now, to calculate the amount of charge that is contained inside of this cube, we have to multiply a constant value, epsilon, by a quantity known as the electric flux. So what we really need to do is figure out the electric flux for this cube. To do that, we'll begin by examining the top surface of the cube. And we can calculate the electric flux of the top surface by computing an integral around that top surface of this dot product. Now, it's important to rewrite the dot product as the magnitude of the electric field by the magnitude of dA this is known as an area vector, we'll talk about that momentarily, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between those two. Now, what we do for an area vector is we go over to the surface and we draw a vector that points away from the interior, away from the interior. So in this case, we would be pointing a vector straight up and we would label that dA. You'll notice that the angle between dA and the electric field E is 180 degrees because one points up and the other points down. So we can actually rewrite this as electric field times dA times the cosine of 180 degrees. Now of course the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1 so we'll factor out the negative 1 and then it turns out that the electric field because it's a constant value at the top surface I believe it's 60 newtons per coulomb. It's a constant value, so that can be factored outside the integral as well. So you're actually just left with negative e times this integral of dA. Now, from basic calculus, we recall that the integral of dA would just be the area. So we actually have negative ea. And again, this is the flux along the top surface. We can actually go ahead and plug in the known values. At the top surface, remember that the electric field had a magnitude of 60 newtons per coulomb. That was at the higher altitude, so that would be the upper surface. So we'll have 60 newtons per coulomb multiplied by the area of the top surface. Now the top surface is a square, so the area of a square would be one side multiplied by the other side. And we remember that each side was 100 meters on edge. So we'll multiply 100 meters by 100 meters, and that would give us the area of the top surface. We could actually just write 100 meters squared for simplicity. Let's not forget the negative sign, as I almost did right there. That's important. So when we work this out, we'll have negative 60 times 100 squared, and we get negative 6 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can see the unit is Newton meters squared per coulomb. That's the flux at the top surface. Now, let's go to the bottom surface because it's very similar. We have the area vector, the dA, that would point this time downward. Remember, you point the dA vector away from the interior. But now dA and the electric field in orange are both pointing down. So the angle between them would actually be zero degrees. So we, we, we rework this similarly to what we did with the top surface. We have the flux through the bottom is equal to the integral of E dA cosine of the angle. Now again, that angle is zero degrees. Cosine of zero is equal to one. So we really just have E times dA. The electric field is constant again, so factor it out. And then the area of the bottom surface will be what we get when we integrate dA. We just get the area. And so we take the electric field magnitude. Now be careful, down here, the electric field was at the lower altitude, and that has a magnitude of 100 newtons per coulomb. That was at the lower altitude. So just make sure you plug in that for the electric field. And then we're multiplying it by the area, which is 100 meters squared. So we'll pick up our calculator. And we're going to get a 1 with many zeros after it. It'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. Newton meters squared per coulomb. So we've got the top and the bottom electric fluxes. We haven't gotten the sides yet. 
And we've saved that for last because it turns out the flux there will be zero. We can see that if we look at the right side of the cube right here. Let's point the area vector away from the interior. You'll notice that the angle between the downward electric field and the rightward area vector would be 90 degrees. It's important to see that. We recall that the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. So if we were to set up an electric flux equation for the right side, we would have an integral of E dA times the cosine of zero, which is zero. The whole thing would just go to zero. So there is no flux on the right side. For similar reasons, the left side, front side, and back side will also have zero flux because their angles are all 90 degrees between the electric field and the area vector dA. So there's only two fluxes to, to kind of worry about here. We can get the total electric flux, which we just might say is phi total, by just adding the flux along the top and the flux along the bottom. So for the top, we got negative six, one, two, three, four, five zeros. Oops, that should be Newton meters squared per coulomb. And then you're going to add that to what we got along the bottom. Probably should have used scientific notation here. But when we add these together, we're going to get a total flux of 400,000 Newton meters squared per coulomb. So that's our electric flux that we need to use with Gauss's law. Recall that Gauss's law said the enclosed charge equaled a constant times the electric flux. So we take this constant value, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and then it has this really funky unit of coulombs squared per Newton meter squared. Coulombs squared per Newton meter squared. Multiply this by the total flux. And if we look carefully, dimensionally, the Newton meter squareds will cancel. And coulombs squared divided by coulombs is just coulombs. So we pick up our calculators, we multiply this out, and we get an enclosed charge of 3.54 times 10 to the minus sixth. And this will come out into coulombs. If you need to convert that into micro coulombs, you can recall that one micro coulomb is 10 to the minus sixth coulombs. So this would work out to 3.54 microcoulombs. That's the enclosed charge within that Gaussian cube.